Hi, this is Eric Martin with Working Geek. I'm here with Aaron West from Elzra, uh, looking at a prototype right now of catacombs and castles. So I'll come in very close and zoom. We don't have a final production because you're on Kickstarter right now. That's right. Uh, getting funding for the game. That's right. But hoping you could demo what is going on here, how this differs from catacombs, and what's new, what's right. different. Why do? Why would I want this? What is interesting about this? Right. So in in catacombs. We have a fantasy dungeon crawl, where you're exploring several different rooms, ultimately to face the boss guy, and it's all driven by our dexterity game system. That's a real quick summary. Okay. Now, in Catacombs and Castles, you have the same system, but it's being used in both cooperative and competitive play. Okay. And there's some differences with the way that the, the board and the, the, the game itself place. Okay. So let's start with the board first. So like Catacombs, we like our double-sided boards. This is a some prototype artwork representing one side of it. In fact, the board will actually be a little bit bigger. This is uh, an 18 by 18. It'll be a 20 by 20. Okay. And we envision that these obstacle pieces that you see here will be unique to each side of the board. So part of the value proposition here is, is that in Catacombs, you have obstacle disks that are situated directly in the board in holes mm -hmm. that kind of in a way give it a, a feeling like pinball because you flick your character and you might bounce off some of those obstacles. Okay. In this game, the obstacles sit directly on the board and there's a lot of replayability because they're heavy enough that they're not going to move. You can see, for example, if I do a missile shot using a uh, one of those pieces, the, that, that obstacle's not going anywhere. Right. And on the final version of the board, each of these quadrants will have locations where you can place these. And so you would have the six, five or six that you would have for the catacomb side of the board, mm -hmm. five or six approximately for the castle side of the board. And if you're familiar with Quan Chai's artwork, he already gives it a, a strong three-dimensional uh, perspective. So we envision that these will be painted in the different colors that are applicable to that side of the board okay. and will have some stickers on it that might suggest, for example, a castle tower. Okay. So this is going to give the board a very, very three-dimensional type view that's going to integrate nicely with Quan Chai's artwork. And these can be placed in different lo those locations I mentioned earlier, which really enhances the replayability. Okay. So once this is all set up, we have our teams, and we're essentially playing catacombs with a shared pool of health. Now, if you want to play alpha male, you can, and you can assign the health to each of the heroes. Okay. So right now, we've got uh, uh, our castle heroes, which are the good guys. And for the first time, we have catacomb heroes. So before in catacombs, we had this sort of faceless union of, of you know, orcs 312, you know, like that has to show up and fight the heroes, and they're, they're pretty fl faceless. This time around, you can actually choose one of these heroes from the catacomb and versus the, that, that castle team. Okay. And you're, there's, like I said, player elimination is optional. So what happens is, is that as you damage your, the other players, so for example, if we had the Huntress here versus the Queen of Storms, and we flicked it, assuming that shot did damage, the health token would be transferred from that catacomb team to the castle team. Okay. They could, the, the, the person controlling the Lara, the Huntress in this particular case, would place that on an ability card. Okay. So each hero has three ability cards and you charge them up. Once the ability card is charged, you can unleash that ability. Okay. okay. Which, of course, gives incentive to go out. You're not just hunting, uh, hiding back here. Well, that's exactly you right. You all this. So activity. if you start turtling in this game, you are in trouble. Okay. okay? And it, so it's designed to be a quick to play. You're in there. Um, these uh, ability cards I alluded to are generic. So they're not tied to a particular hero. Okay. So although there's some that are suggested, you can move them around. You can, you can switch them. Okay. And uh, that helps again with the replayability and also helps when you're bringing in heroes from catacombs that you might want to bring into this product. 
So that's the, uh, that's the overview of it. But whereas in Catacombs you're doing more melee shots where you're moving your actual hero to do damage, in this game you're doing more rush shots in conjunction with the range shots. Mm -hmm. So for example, the fireball shots and the missile shots, um, th these uh, characters can, can move around a lot more. So, okay. it's, so you're in a sense uh, in Catacombs where you're using the obstacle pieces more for doing trick shots, you can do that here too, but they're really more for cover. Okay. You know, strategically to be able to stay behind them. I was thinking of paintball as you're starting well, to talk about hey, this. Hey, paintball's great. Maybe we need a paintball piece, right? <laughs> um, so that's the that's the that's the premise, right? You're going to getting into position, and some of them are a bit slower. Like the robots, for example, they can they they move and place a shield piece, um, and then do their ranged attack on the next turn. Okay. So some of them are faster, and some of them are slower. So each hero is they you, you would typically choose three for your team uh, out of the four um, okay. on the catacomb side and the castle side, but th they all have their own particular role to play. And it's, there's some nice combinations that you can get based okay. on those, those roles. Cooperative side, uh, there's, it's very similar to, to Catacombs 3rd Edition where you get to the Catacomb Lord at the end. It's sort of like a boss fight. One player is the overseer controlling a castle lord or catacomb lord with up to three characters coming in and uh, attempting to defeat them. Okay. So, and there's some new twists that are have been integrated into that mode from uh, versus just straight Catacombs Third Edition. Okay. All right. Uh, is there a solo solo mode or no? There's. I thought I remember. You might be thinking of the fact that uh, that it's the overseer player. Solo, Against who, con who controls, yeah, who controls okay. that uh, castle or catacomb lord versus the other heroes. Okay, maybe that was it. So right. I suspect that's that okay. was what you were thinking of. Yeah. Uh, anything else to talk about with this or with third edition? I believe you're going back to print now. Y yes, we are. So the intention is, is we're hoping to be able to print catacombs and castles at the same time that we do catacombs third edition again. Okay. So it, uh, we know that people have. Um, shared this with us, uh, fans, retailers. Hey, it's out of print. Uh, we actually sold out at wholesale in 24 hours, okay. so it was. Uh, we went a lot quicker good than. News, we, bad news. You know, it's a it's a good news story. It's a good problem to have, but uh, it was the sales velocity was very quick, and it, it sold through at retail very very fast. So um, yeah, we're just in the process of uh, of getting going through all of that uh, um, process, and it's a process. And we're really hoping we're going to be a print a lot more of them this time around. Okay. Uh, we're also um, just as a uh, an announcement here on on BGG, uh, we have another expansion in expansion, possibly standalone game in development called Wyverns of Wildmere that will be both compatible with Catacombs and Castles and Catacombs Third Edition. Okay. We also have a Catacombs card game in development, which okay. will get the Catacombs world and characters in front of people at a very, very affordable price, introducing them to the, um, to, to the, the de de dexterity-based games, basically. And then we also have our arena system. So this is what's suggested here. Um, we we want to take it a little bit larger scale, where you'd have right. army packs of okay. characters fighting in this arena. So that's in development as well. Okay. And as we weren't busy enough, we're also working on a digital version of Catacombs. Which seems to defeat the purpose. I don't know. The, the, the dexterity element comes through with the digital version too? You're gonna well, be, you can flick your pieces. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it'd be the same though. But I suppose it doesn't have to feel the same. No. It, I, I mean, I think about um, how Gal Czech Games did Galaxy Trucker and then a digital version, which they're trying to mimic the feel of the game, but it's not the exact same it, gameplay. It's that's correct. You know, so, you take advantage of the elements that are available to you. So what we're going to do with the digital version? It's we have a partner that we're working with. It may be that it'll use the characters, but it might not be looking to replicate exactly right. the same experience. Okay. And we would probably focus more because. It's easier to sell people on the digital side with competitive. It will probably be the catacombs and castles, which we'll be, right. you know, looking to implement in the in the digital version. Okay. So um, you know, it'll be kind of like a video game version of. It might not be a one-to-one -one entirely, but a right. video game type version of catacombs and castles. All in right. A sense. Interesting. So we we think it's uh, 
you know, with Quantrai's artwork, um, an interesting opportunity to pursue. Yeah, his artwork is great. I don't know if you have Chad has a game published that has his artwork on as well. And That's it's just, right. It's phenomenal. To Prospectus look at. from Chad, a board game geek. Yeah. As a shout out for it. I mean, it, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's amazing to look at. It's very recognizable and catchy. Yes. And do not get tired of it. Uh, of That's right. At this, there's lots of stuff going on in all the pictures. That's correct, and he's done adults. some fantastic work for Catacombs and Castles. We're very happy with what he's done. Um, uh, where a lot of the artwork is, has already been completed, actually, so we're, we're making good progress on the production side. Okay. All right, yeah. thanks very much for the overview. There's uh, Catacombs and Castles with a larger version than this coming in the future. Uh, that's, <laughs> that, that's, that's correct, yes. It's on, it's on uh, Kickstarter now. There's another 10 days left, um, and, uh, and there'll be... We're using a pledge manager, so there'll be options okay. doing a late And actual as delivery well. for expected delivery is right? We're November. November uh, on, on Kickstarter, and there's people saying, "Oh, they're not going to make it, right? We're going to we we have to make it." <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks uh, again. Yeah. Thank you very much. We yeah. really appreciate it.